So here's my latest tarot deck purchase. It's a Hay House deck. It didn't cost me very much because I got it in a sale. So I thought, why not? Why not treat myself to a new tarot deck? So let's unbox it together. So as you can see, this is the Sufi Tarot and it's by Ayida Hussain. Hay House publication. Got a couple of finger holes there to open the deck with. Um, let's see what it says on the back. Transform your life with the ancient Sufi wisdom. The quest for mystical truth is common to both tarot and Sufism. Sufism, called the path of the heart, is about polishing the mirror of the heart to reflect the divine. Similarly, tarot is about discovering the, discovering the hidden secrets behind the arcanas. This beautifully illustrated deck creates re -envisions, creatively re-envisions the cards through a Sufi lens and shares the potency of its ancient teachings and healing techniques. Okay, so let's open this beauty. Oh, it's quite easy to open. What's it say? Dare you have the courage to be who you really are. That's something some of us struggle with all our lives, isn't it? So what have we got? Let's have a look at the little book. It is 174. Oh, hold on. 166 pages of text. So let's have a look. So for a major arcana card, we get one, two pages. One, two, yep, two pages. And for minors, one, one and a half. And let's have a look. dedication contents the practice of fell the three card spread Sufi tarot five pointed star spread about the major arcana about the minor arcana and then we go on to the cards there we go the Sufi Tarot is my way of bringing together two traditions that I love. True traditions based in healing and transformation that are often viewed as being distinct. The similarities, however, are endless. The journey, the symbolism, the art, the history, the elements and the colours merge in a commingling dance of joy as wave upon wave of love and healing washes down upon us. So by re envisioning re-envisioning and reinterpreting each card through the lens of Sufism, I hope to share the potency of these ancient mystical teachings, practices and healing techniques. The poetry, philosophy and teachings of two Sufis, 13th century poet Halal al-Din, Muhammad Rumi, known properly popularly as Rumi. I've got a few Rumi decks actually. And Hazrat Inyat Khan, the teacher and musician from India, who brought Sufism to the West in the early 20th century, and to whose spiritual lineage I belong, have been central in my personal journey. Their words will appear throughout the card, serving as a guide as we discover the meaning of tarot in our lives. It's a tradition in which a famous book of poetry is consulted when one is faced with a challenge difficulty or has an important question. The first line the eyes of the reader fall on is believed to be the answer. So these cards can be used the same way. Shuffle them with intention as a specific question, pick one, and that's your answer. Hmm, okay. So this spread here, we've got head, arms, legs, and heart. So 
So we have upright meaning, reversed meaning, some text, which describes the imagery. A contemplation, so something we can journal with here. So for the full, what baggage must I shed to move forward? What beliefs and patterns keep me from progressing on my path? And then we have an affirmation. I move forward toward my life's purpose with joy and ease, knowing that I am divinely guided and protected. So this is another deck that's going to be ideal for journaling. Okay, let's have a little look at the cards now. So a plain inner box. Again, paper band. Look at the backs. It's like a Persian carpet, isn't it? Or a mandala. Oh, it's so beautiful. Some of my favourite colours there. <laughs> okay, let's have a little look. So we'll go through. Let's go through the majors first. Okay, do the majors first. Okay. Zoom in. This fool is called Salik. Instead of the magician, we've got the alchemist. Interesting, the actual pages here have formed the figure of eight, the lemon escape. So for the high priestess, we have Mashida. You've got the crescent moon there. Her feet are in the water. For the empress, Oh, I'm not going to be able to say these names. She's pregnant. Sharp, Charbonneau, maybe. The emperor is a sultan, and he's got the rams and red for Aries. The hierophant, Pia. And his connection there from his heart and his temple in the background. The lovers, Ashikan. Chariots, Wally. Strength, Quait. What? It's quite a young girl on the strength card. She seems to be holding a chick in her hand there. <laughs> the hermit is a dervish in a cave and he's produced his own light. <laughs> okay, so this is the Wheel of Fortune. Um, I'm going to struggle, shock, for lack. <laughs> so we've got the wheel going round with water in it, and the water is pouring out as the wheel goes around. And he looks like he's dancing, doesn't he? Justice. So we've got the scales here and we have a sword. The hanged one. Looks like ice coming down. Wow. 
walking towards the light. That's the first time I've seen a depiction of death like that, actually walking towards the light. That's quite profound. That sort of hit me in the chest. <laughs> oh, okay. Temperance. That's interesting, she's half in the sand and half in the water. So combining the two within herself, the angel. Well, this is a dark card, isn't it? This devil card. Really difficult to see. I'm going to bring it up to the camera and see if I can see it any better. So we've got chains. We've got a shadow figure held in the chains. Red smoke and a window out. The tower. Struck by lightning. No figures falling though. Star. Almost looks like a Christmas star. <laughs> Moon. So we can see the two animals here. A dog and a wolf. Very dark there. I'm just about to see them by the light of that crescent moon on the water. The sun. That's pretty. Judgment. So these bodies are mummified. They got they're all wrapped up. Perhaps that's a tradition in Sufism. Showing my ignorance. And we've got rainbows here, look. A rainbow web net. As this flute player transforms like butterflies transform from caterpillars. These are transforming and their essence, this is their essence here, rising up. Beautiful. And the world card, oh, she looks happy, doesn't she? In that beautiful swing. And we've got some elemental associations in the corners. Yep. I'll go through them quite quickly I think. This is the ace, we've got a carpet of flowers literally and the power coming from that staff there. He's having to hold on to it, it seems like it's got a life of its own and he's struggling to actually hold on to that. Two. Preparation. Three, going forward, four, celebration, five, competition, six, victory, seven, Meditating there. Well, chaos goes on around her. She's emanating her own light into the world. Eight. Rapid, rapid movement. Nine. Ten. Maybe there. And then we have the daughter for the page. The sun for the night. Malika for the queen. And she has got a cat. Not a black one, but she has got a cat. 
and then Shah for the king. Okay, an overflowing ace of cups. Oh, how lovely is that two of cups? It's total understanding of each other, isn't it? Beautiful. Three. Four. That looks very light seers imagery there. Reminds me of the light seers. Five. Oh dear. Broken her cups. Very upset. Six. Oh, there's the child. Reminiscing white rose from my heart. Remember when we were young and carefree, huh? Seven. Oh, lots of nice choices there. Which ones are you going to go for? Nice. Giving her a headache, though. <laughs> Eight. Nine. They're raising some energy there. Ten. Oh, it's a rainbow. Always like to see a rainbow in the Ten of Cups. Daughter. Son. That ghostly bridge there. Malika. Oh. And the shah underneath a waterfall in a cave, in front of a cave. So now we have the swords, the hand bringing the sword in, and the clouds. The two, blindfold but no swords. Oh, there they are. Two paths. Which one to choose? Three. So the swords here are above, they're not actually piercing the heart, but the heart is leaking energy. Four. Five. Ooh. Seeing his own reflection there. Six. Different different perspective of the boat so we're actually in the boat ourselves here and there's some spiritual wings there ethereal seven of swords there he goes The eight, so this time the figure is just, you can just see the head and neck of the figure behind the swords in this one. Blindfold still. That's different. The nine. Thoughts going round and round and round and round and round your head. <laughs> That's quite good, isn't it? I like that. I don't like thoughts going round and round my head, but I like the depiction. Ten of Swords. Oh. Destruction. The daughter. Like these little birds here. Sun. A lot of swift movement on that one. Malika, the Queen. And the shawl looks rather relaxed. Okay, and finally on to the pentacles um, called the coins. So we're planting the seed of success here. <laughs> I 
a beautiful seed it is. Two, actually playing two drums here, so that would take a lot of skill actually to go between those two. That's a really cool depiction of a two of coins. Three working together and making these beautiful tiles. Four holding on to his belongings, his cash. Four coins on the front there. Five. Obviously not a church this time, but a temple, I would think. There's little red ribbons attached there to the lattice work. These figures on the steps outside in a rugged cloak. Six, giving and receiving. Seven, under the tree. Eight. Working hard. We're seeing this figure here. I think it's a dervish. Is it a dervish? I'll have a look in the guidebook. But this figure is appearing in quite a few cards, I've noticed. Nine of coins. <laughs> just dropping into a lap isn't it? <laughs> Ten of coins, daughter, son, nice wheat field, Lika and the Shah. So not too far removed from a typical um, type of imagery for the tarot just a little bit of a different slant on it and I must admit I don't really know anything about Sufi or Sufism don't pretend to but it would be interesting to actually read up on it a little bit and see what it's about so I'm going to shuffle the cards see what that's like just zoom out a bit Fully reversible. It's quite a thick deck. The cardstock's quite thick. Let's have a go. Oh no. Oh no. Ah, there's no flex in that. Oh, that's going to take a bit of breaking in, I think. Okay. Oi. Oh, oh. Well, that's a bit difficult to shuffle. The cards are quite large. Um, they're oracle size cards, obviously. Let's see. Let's find a tarot card. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, they are oracle sized cards. They're quite big. And I mean, that's the difference. So you've got a nice, got a nice flexible bend here with this Rider Waite Smith deck, normal Rider Waite Smith deck. And this one is more cardboardy. A little bit difficult to shuffle. Keep trying. Maybe when they're broken in, they'll be a bit better. Okay. I'm just going to think. Um, I'll have one more go at riffling, but I think that I'm just going to be able to overhand, and that's going to be about the best I can do. Obviously, if you've got small hands, this is going to be even more challenging. There's no 
Oh, it might be all right, actually. It might be okay. Me being a wuss. <laughs> right, let's draw a card. Okay, Sufi Tarot. Tell me a little bit about you as a tarot deck. What can we expect from you? Challenging card, the five of coins. I'm going to go to the guidebook, but I mean, we, most of us know what the five of pentacles is about. But I just want to see if it's any different in meaning. So upright, material trouble, hard times, being tested, illness, feeling left out in the cold, losing faith. So it is, it's the same, it's exactly the same. Reversed, recovery, healing, end to material hardship, spiritual growth from adversity. It's just the same meaning as um, you would find in any tarot deck. I'm just going to quick read. So the Sufi part of it. Spirituality. The Sufis have long looked at physical hardships as opportunities to evolve. So you've been asked to contemplate the following lines by Rumi. I do not know who lives here in my chest, or why the smile comes, I am not myself, more the bare green knob of a rose that lost every leaf and petal to the morning wind. The book asks, what does it mean to be the bare green knob of a rose that has lost its petals to the morning wind? If you base your identity on externals, it is indeed negative. But what if you realise you were always the knob and the petals were but superficial, transient appendages for those who could not see the value of the knob? Is it not absolutely liberating to have shed the superficialities you held on to for the world and finally be able to turn to your authentic self? So contemplations. What lesson are my outer circumstances trying to teach me? In what way can I shed superficialities that keep me from moving forward? And the affirmation, I am abundance and I attract abundance. So there we go, that's the Sufi Tarot by Ayida Hussain, a Hay House publication. And the art is by different people. So we've got Hassan of Dab, Mamina Khan, two artists by the looks of that, and an art director. So yeah, that's the Sufi Tarot. So I hope you enjoyed that little walkthrough. So what do I think? I think this Sufi Tarot is going to add an extra layer for me on what I already know about the Tarot. So it's going to enhance um, my understanding by bringing more spirituality into it, the Sufi tradition, and it will teach me about the Sufi tradition in a structured way that I understand, because I understand the tarot, so that will help me build um, my learning. The framework is the tarot, and I'll be able to layer on top of that framework some understanding of Sufism. So I'm really grateful for this deck and I'm going to look forward to working with this. And once again, thank you guys for watching and bye.